but nevertheless, we're thankful. I want to, to share today from a sermonic title that's very simple. Are you ready for your change? Are you ready for your change? This cold weather has forced me uh, out of the cold and over to the local gym. Uh, there was a day during the warmer months I would get out and walk my two miles in the neighborhood, but when the Hulk showed up, I had to go back to plan A. And so over the last week or two, and I may not look like it yet, but I made my way back to the gym have not forgotten the way that has not changed. Uh, once I got there, it was a familiar place. Some of the same folk were still there. Uh, some of the regulars were glad to see me and they wanted to know where I'd been. I said, well, where have you been? And I said, we just missed each other. Uh, but we thank God that the equipment is about the same. I'm lifting about what I was lifting before. Uh, no more, no less. And as I began to walk around the track, uh, I noticed that another thing had not changed. Mm -hmm. On this particular day, it was raining, and as a result of the rain, the roof was leaking. Mm -hmm. It was leaking a couple years ago, and the custodial staff would bring out two trash cans to catch the water, and they're still doing that. As I made my way around, uh, one of my good friends who was a mainstay at the gym looked at me and we both laughed and said, you know, some things just don't change. As I walked further, he said, and some people don't change. And that helped me this week uh, as God planted that into my spirit about this sense of changing. And so I want to raise the question this morning, are you ready for your change? I didn't say resolution. I didn't say the promise. But really, are you ready to be a different person than you were not last year, but maybe last week? I don't know about you, but there's nothing wrong with changing. I don't believe that you ought to be such a new person that nobody knows who you are, but there's a certain personality we have. But is there anybody think that they can change? They can change. Yeah. Anybody open to change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to know that God can change people? Amen. He can change places. He can change situations in life. Mm -hmm. If there's one who knows about that well, it is the person who writes the letter today in the book of Romans. The person of Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul was formerly Saul, and with that name, he was known as a persecutor. Mm -hmm. In other words, Saul was a bad, mean somebody who chased after Christians, and they called him Saul. Mm -hmm. Now, they called you something before you got saved, yeah. and they called me some names before. I got saved. Can I just be real this morning? Be real. Well, we all got a street name. If I went back to your neighborhood and called your name, who? Oh, you mean Lil Willie? And, and, and so they would know that name. But isn't it great that as God transforms us, that we're able to change? And so Paul writes from Corinth in the dead of winter to about five churches that he had been a part of to encourage them in the Lord. Paul was one who, in his letter, talked really about who God is, uh, what God has done, and who Jesus Christ is in our lives. And the Word also helps us. I love that, that the Word of God is designed to change us. The Word of God is designed to strengthen us. It's not just the bestseller, but it will help you and help me in our process of changing. You may say, Reverend, I'm not changing. I like who I am. <coughs> I've been this way all my life, and I'm not changing for anybody. And sometimes we expect people to change, mm -hmm. yeah. but we don't want to change. Mm -hmm. If they would just do better, 
but you're not willing to cross the line. Am I talking to a church that might know about this this morning? Yeah. That you want everybody to change, yeah. but you are not prepared or you don't want to make a change in your own life. Yeah. And so Paul talks really in that first verse about this sense of, you know, body. He talks about the physical man that, you know, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you might do what? Present, Present yourself uh -huh, as a living sacrifice. sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Freedom. It's the least you can do is to present yourself to God in such a way. But it's in that second verse that we really begin to unpack and we set the tone for the text. And it says, but be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, mind that you may do what? Prove. Prove. Good and good and Amen. Good and I praise God that y'all cheat. I got the up on the screen. <laughs> but it's something about getting that word in you. And so I begin to look at this text. There's some things that I, I think will help us. First of all, there has to be a choice to change. And be not conformed to this world and this world system. Uh, it says, don't copy the world's pattern. Uh, don't copy the world's behaviors. Don't copy the world's customs. And I love what the young folks say, you got to get in where you fit in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, we kind of adapt to the world. Amen? I've said on many occasions, folk know you don't belong in certain places. You don't even look right in that club anymore. All right. mm -hmm. You don't look right at that place that you frequented. I know I'm not on anybody's street. <laughs> but when God changes us, the things that we used to do, places we used to go, and that's the old school testimony, we, we don't go anymore. We don't participate anymore. Mm -hmm. And those who know us will know that something has changed about us. Yeah, that's right. You know, I allowed the world to shape me. I didn't mind being conformed to the world. You know, I didn't want to change. I wanted to play both sides. Do I have a witness? Amen. I can give you the church look on Sunday and turn around on Monday and be one other place and one other way. I'm by myself today. But God is so faithful that I have to make a choice to change, not make over, but change who I am yes. to the glory of God. Yes. Have you allowed the world to shape you? Allow the world to set the course for your life? Everybody wants to be kind of in the know. But when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, folk ought to be looking at you as being the model. Amen? Yes. Do yes. we want to change? And what I like about God many things, he will not force you to change. He won't grab you by your arm and twist you so you're going to change today. But we have free will. Change if you want to change. Amen? And when you surrender to God, it makes a real difference. And be not conformed to this world. I like what Gospel of Mark says, Mark 8, 36, what shall it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose your soul? That you were the popular person. Everybody loved you. Everybody followed you on Facebook. And everybody was with you on Instagram. You were just somebody. You were the king in the court in high school. You were the beauty queen. And you were just a popular person, but we've got to be willing to break out of that and desire to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody believe that today? Amen. It, it's a gradual thing. Amen. You know, we've all known people that you know, they go to one church service and get saved, and then all of a sudden they, you know, they it's highfalutin. They're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Mm -hmm. They don't laugh no more. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to the movie. They don't want to do anything. And that's such a big jump, but don't allow the world to shape you, but you ought to be shaping the world for the cause of Christ. Make a 
choice to change, but also give yourself a chance to change. Yeah. It says, but be ye or be you or be me transformed. Ah, you know, it says, but is a conjunction used to introduce something or to contrast something that's already been mentioned. Yeah. So be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How do y'all remember back in the early 80s, these new toys came out? Yeah. Uh, they were transformers. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Some of y'all still got them. Yeah. I know you do. And, and you had to basically, you could change it up. That the toy, one minute, might be a warrior. Mm -hmm. And the next minute, it would be a piece of equipment or a truck. Look at that. Somebody know that thing. <laughs> And the next minute, it might be a, a, you know, a vehicle. But to transform is to transfigure. That we allow ourselves, by way of this word, to change by way of transformation. Transform us. And, or you could be a conformer. Which, which are you? Are you willing to, to be so open to the Spirit of God that you allow the Lord to, to shape you? It may not feel good. But when you see yourself making progress, pat yourself on the back, because I'm not the mean rascal I used to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not the liar. God, I'm getting real this morning. <laughs> I'm not the liar I used to be. I don't cheat like I used to cheat. You know, I'm a better person now. Right. Maybe not overnight. And sometimes we ask folks to get saved and, and make them think that overnight we just changed up. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. There, there's the old man. Mm -hmm. And there's the old woman that it'll rise up. And you have to slay that person daily. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And so give yourself a chance to change by being transformed. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to just conform. I, I used to just want to say, you know what, I, wanna, I don't want to look out of place. Mm -hmm. I don't want folk to know that I don't know something. I, you know, I want to be able to have the same verbiage as someone else. Mm -hmm. Ever been your case that you just felt like, you know, I know I'm in church and I'm saved, but, you know, and, and God will do that. And so it becomes an individual mandate that I will allow the Lord to just kind of fix me up and fill some of the holes in and make me a better me to the glory of God. That's right. We can make a decision in that very way. And so in our own lives, we have to choose whether or not we will allow our lives to be reshaped and changed. And to be transformed in him. It's not an easy thing. Nobody really wants to change. Mm -hmm. But when you see God give you just a, that much more, mm -hmm. you want to shout because of that. So, oh, Lord, there was a day I would have done this. But because God is working in me, I'm not perfect, but I'm better. Amen. Maybe, maybe that, that'll help a little bit. Maybe I, I don't want to make you think that Reverend want me to go from here to here in 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. No, I'm saying... Can we get better at who we are? Yes. Uh, can we compromise a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, can we apologize every now and then? Amen. And you're not gonna change. You're not gonna change grown folk. Mm -hmm. You said in your ways, right. and they said in their ways, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to change. Yeah. But let God be the one to do the changing in your life today, yeah. Yeah. like what Paul writes to the Corinth church in Corinth, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. They're a new creature. Yeah. All things are passed away. Behold, yeah. all things right. become new. Yeah. I've made a choice that I'm going to be a little better. If, yeah. if nothing but that much, uh, you know, I'm not going to be as worldly. I'm going to make sure that I've got the opportunity. I, I, I've got a chance. So I'll, I'll let myself get bent a little bit to shape uh, to where God can use me to his glory. But finally, you may say, well, how do you change? 